This is Brian Jakovich and welcome to Stelgen Screencasts. In this screencast, I'm going to go over how you can use an IM role with the AWS Ruby SDK. I'm going to assume that you have the basic understanding of how an IM user in the Ruby SDK work with the access keys and secret access keys to authenticated services. However, if you're unfamiliar, I would go and check out the AWS Ruby SDK RDoc at docs.aws.amazon.com slash AWS Ruby SDK slash latest. The annotation should pop up. Generally, when authenticating to S3 using Ruby, you would have something like this, where it's you create a variable and then you call out to the AWS S3 module and pass in the access key and secret access key. You would be then connected to the S3 service and then you can access the various parts of it. Embedding the access keys and secret access keys into your code is fine for development because well you're using your IAM user and the and you have access to credentials. There shouldn't be an issue. You're working on your local development box, no big problem. However, where it becomes questionable is when you need your automated services or your application code to have access to your AWS resources. It goes without saying that you really should never check your AWS credentials into version control as that's a major security vulnerability. It's almost like checking in a password. You just don't do it. So that being said, you, you have a dilemma. How do you get your access keys onto the instance in a secure manner and preferably through an automated process? Well, to accomplish this task, you can use either an IAM user or an IAM role. For the IAM user approach, you need to embed the user's access credentials on the instance itself in a configuration file. The problem with this approach is, unless you're using CloudFormation, this is probably going to be a manual process, and it's not ideal. You are able to do this with CloudFormation, as I mentioned before, by creating a user inside your template and then referencing that user's credentials in a config file that's built using CloudFormation init. So you would use the CloudFormation init file and then you would embed the access key and secret access key from that IAM user that was created in that template. On the other hand, um, you could use an IAM role, which is just as easy to set up and is the preferred approach. The only caveat to this is that IAM roles currently do not support every service. They support most of them, but not all. Generally, you have access to everything you need. I mean, your typical application only really uses S3 or maybe EC2, SimpleDB, DynamoDB, stuff like that, or RDS. Um, all that stuff is supported by the IAM roles. However, if you are worried about some of the services, you can go check this, check out the list by going to docs.aws.amazon.com slash STS slash latest slash using STS slash using tokens.html and the annotation should pop up for that. With an IAM role, you can simply just create the role, define its access policies, and then set permissions. Uh, you would do this the same way you would to define an access policy for an IAM user. And it looks really close to that. And to access an IAM role, you create a, a, an instance with that role and then your instance will have access to the AWS secret access keys and the access keys uh, provided by the role using the EC2 metadata service. So if you were to have your roles configured, you would simply just do something like, it grabs the AWS credentials from the metadata service and all you have to do is call out or create a new session. This is really simple and very convenient. Another point I want to mention is regarding why you should use roles. Uh, a role, roles access and secret access keys are continually rotated, meaning they don't stay the same for a long period of time. They are rotated once every 12 hours by default. If you were to use an IAM user instead of an IAM role, rotating security credentials becomes a hassle. First, you need to go into the IAM console, then create new security keys uh, for the IAM user, and then go into the instance itself and manually switch the access keys in your configuration file. It's a real pain. Um, then imagine doing that for a web server fleet of 20 to 50 instances. 
That's an insane amount of work when all you have to do is just use an IAM role and it'll take care of it for you. So let me take a quick step back and you may be asking yourself, why would you even bother rotating security credentials? Well, picture this. A contractor comes in and is given access to the to one of your instances that is relatively permanent and has the credentials for a full administrator access, which is pretty typical. So they go and find the config file, grab the keys and store them somewhere. Just typical development work, nothing malicious. They're just they're just doing the job. Then the contractor's contract runs out and he's no longer needed at the company. From here on out, the contractor has admin API access to your AWS account, which means he can really do whatever he wants. If he has malicious intentions, he can really affect your software process. He could take down everything. However, if you simply have just rotated the access keys, he couldn't do anything malicious. The access keys would be uh, switched over. So while that scenario is unlikely and obviously, obviously the worst case scenario, there's plenty of room for smaller and less obvious catastrophes to take place. So for safe measure, it's really a good practice to rotate your keys every so often to ensure that the unnecessary access isn't given to, to people, the wrong people, or people that are no longer need the access. If you don't want your instances to have access to the API any longer, you simply go to the role and then revoke the EC2 or the trusted entities uh, section. So basically what happens is your instances, as long as they have the trust relationship with the role, they can go in and, and they have access to these security keys. However, once you, once you remove that, um, the trust relationship, they no, they no longer have access to the access keys and they basically, they more or less just lose all access to AWS. The instance will still stay there and still be working and everything, but they won't have API access. Okay, so we've gone over why roles are so great and how they remove the credential hassle from your application. So let's now get into how do you go about using them. Well, we'll go our usual method and we will use a CloudFormation template to show the, an example of creating a role and then defining its access policy and lastly uh, connecting it to our EC2 instances. Okay, so here's a CloudFormation template. This is the same template that we ended up with in our last episode, episode five, where we did the auto scaling. Now we'll just go to the resource section and go and create an, an IAM role. What I'll be doing here is I will be creating and attaching an IAM role to my auto scaling group's launch configuration, which will in turn attach to the instances it launches. If you want to do this with a single EC2 instance, it's very simple. You just need to attach the role to the instance instead of the auto-scaling group launch, launch configuration. Okay, so now we'll go and create the IAM role itself. Okay, so that's the role. Uh, basically what's happening is we're assigning the type I am role. Um, then we're creating the assume policy document, which basically defines what can assume this role. And only ec2.amazonaws.com can do it right now, which is it's just EC2. Uh, basically we're allowing EC2 to assume the role. And then we are specifying the policy that's allowed to have. So we're just, it's just a naming convention up here. We're just calling it root and we're giving it the, we're giving it allow for the action star. 
um, in, no, it's in the resource star. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create an I am or a root. The next thing we do need to do is we need to create an I am instance profile so that we can connect this thing to the Oscon group. Okay, so that's the root instance profile. Um, I am instance role instance profile. So basically, what's doing is is saying which roles I'm going to be adding to my EC2 instance. So basically, inside my launch configuration, I'm just going to reference the I am uh, the root instance profile, and it's going to work. Okay, so now I'm just going to go down to my launch configuration into my properties, and I'm going to add the I am instance profile, and then I'm going to reference the instance profile. that we create up here. Okay, well that's it. Um, we can now launch our CloudFormation stack and it should provision an auto-scaling group with uh, EC2 instances and an IAM role. So let's launch it and verify that works. Our template finished, and I'm now going to SSH into one of the instances it created, or I guess the instance it created. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Ruby file and test to see if we have API access without actually specifying the credentials. So I have my instance IP, and now I just need SSH in. Okay, so now I'm just going to create a file. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new a new object of EC2. I'm specifying the AMI 8C1FECE5, which is a typical Amazon AWS Linux instance. Nothing interesting. So now, if you do notice that I have not specified any access credentials, so if if it works, then we know that the role is configured correctly, and we can just specify. Uh, to use or to create a new object without specifying IAM um, credentials. And however, if it complains, that means that the role did not set up correctly. I'm just going to make sure I have my gems. So I need to make sure I do a gem install AWS SDK. Okay, so now if we do Ruby and run it. Okay, it ran without any issues, or at least we didn't see anything spit out in the command line. So let's see if it created an instance um, with the AMI, our new AMI. And it's creating an instance with the AMI 8C1 FECE5. Perfect, it worked. So therefore our role is configured and working on our EC2 instance has access to the AWS API. IAM roles are a great solution for increased security and use. Uh, they are available on all EC2 instance types, Linux and Windows instances, all AMIs, Amazon VPC, spot and reserved instances, North America, South America, Europe, Europe and Asia Pacific region, regions. So almost everything. Um, they should be coming to GovCloud pretty soon. So considering the IAM role support and ease of use, it's really hard to find a reason not to start using these in your AWS infrastructure, especially for all the, the typical use cases and definitely your application code if you do call out to the AWS API. 
If you like this screencast and want to get updates when new ones are posted, hit like and then subscribe to our channel. And if you have any feedback or inquiries, please email us at info at or tweet me with the handle at Brian Jakovich. Stelligent itself at Stelligent. If none of those work, just leave a comment in YouTube.